Welcome to Working in Teams. Team Steps. This is Lecture A. The objectives for this unit are to describe what Team Steps is and how it can be used as an actionable improvement strategy, identify areas of application for Team Steps tools and methods to be used in HIT teaming, integrate the science of team performance and team training. Note the Team Steps logo shown on the slide, paying particular attention to the four skills located inside of the circle. Leadership, situation monitoring, mutual support, and communication. Each of these skills is considered to be both teachable and learnable. The interaction between the team-related outcomes of attitudes, performance, and knowledge with these four skills is illustrated by the red bidirectional arrows. Notice that in this diagram, the circle that the red arrows cross is labeled, quote, patient care team, end quote. That is because Team Steps is designed primarily for patient care team providers. Many of the techniques here can be repurposed for almost any high-performing team. Therefore, let's replace the, quote, patient care team, end quote, label on the circle with, quote, health IT team, end quote. In the Team Steps model, the red arrows reflect the interplay of outcomes and skills that form the basis of a team striving to deliver safe, quality care. In our example, the red arrows would represent the interaction between the skills of a team and the outcomes that are strived for in regards to a high-performing health IT team. Team Steps is an evidence-based framework that is used to elevate the performance of a team. Team Steps is short for, quote, Team Strategies and Tools to Enhance Performance and Patient Safety, end quote. Team Steps was developed by the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality, AHRQ, and the U.S. Department of Defense. Team Steps is designed to produce highly effective medical teams and is focused on improving communication, optimizing the use of resources, people, and information, and improving other skills that contribute to high-performing teams. Team Steps is derived from teamwork principles identified in high-reliability organizations, HROs, and from Crew Resource Management, CRM, a procedure and training system initially intended to improve the safety in airplane cockpits. Our goal in this unit is to integrate common concepts into a tried and true framework that, while aimed toward patient care and patient safety, can be modified and adapted to suit almost any high-performing team's activities. Team Steps relies upon the five core principles reflected in the circle diagram on the screen. The first, team structure, covers the basics of team membership, the size of the team, what sorts of skill types are present in the team, and specifically addresses the impact of multi-team structure, or MTS. The second, leadership, addresses the capacity to manage the team by making sure that the necessary resources are available, assuring a clear line of communication is in place, and making sure that information is communicated in a timely and accurate way. Situation monitoring is the core principle that addresses the process of active scanning and continual assessment of the situation to assure that the team will function at the highest possible level. Situation monitoring helps the team to assess the environment, prepare for potential adversities, and facilitate good communication along the way. Mutual support is the principle that reflects the ability to support other team members' needs protecting one another and watching out for one another. The, quote, I got your back, end quote, aspect. But it also includes an awareness of other team members' responsibilities and workload. Finally, the principle of communication simply assures that communication is smooth and honest. When all of these concepts come together and articulate well, it can be said that a team is, quote, mindful, end quote. In a team steps approach, there are specific techniques and tools that are used. Although they are all geared toward assuring patient safety, there are concepts that can be borrowed. Here is an aspect of team steps that can easily be borrowed for other types of teams outside of healthcare. Team structure is common to any team. But what makes a team a team? 
Isn't a group a team? No. A team is different from a group. Independent and individual contributions from a group can result in attaining goals, but the group does not function as a unit. The level of communication is fragmented, and the overall structure of a group is less organized. Real-time coordination of activities between the members of the group is not mandatory. A team, on the other hand, is more organized and structured. They operate as a single unit moving toward a goal. Team members exhibit cognition, behaviors, and attitudes that are focused on the, quote, all for one and one for all, end quote, phenomenon. In other words, teams think, do, and feel almost as a single organism. The mission of the team far surpasses the aims of any one individual team member. Understanding team structure is contingent upon comprehending who is on what team and what the individual's role is within any given team. In health IT, it is very common for one team to interact with numerous teams and to sometimes share team members. For instance, in a rollout of a large EHR system, people may find themselves to be a member of several different kinds of teams. This is referred to within the Team Steps model as a multi-team structure or an MTS. The illustration on the slide shows the Team Steps conceptualization of an MTS. Recall that Team Steps is really focused on clinical patient care. You can see that the patient is at the top of the pyramid because the teams are functioning to serve the patient. There is a core team that interacts directly with the patient. Also, a contingency team, as represented by the shape that is connected to the core team by the double-ended arrow. A contingency team is one that is called in to interact with the patient for a specialized reason, such as a code blue team that interacts with a patient during a cardiac arrest. The pyramid also contains a coordinating team, such as the larger overall service to whom a patient belongs, such as surgery or medicine or oncology and so on. Ancillary and support services are another part of the pyramid. The large base of the pyramid is administration. The point here is that there are numerous teams, yet they are all interacting in certain ways to provide high quality care to the patient. They must coordinate their own teams and the activities that go on both within and between all of the teams. As mentioned earlier, sometimes the teams share members as well. For example, the chief resident who is leading the coordinating team may also be, quote, on service, end quote, that week, meaning that she will also serve as a member of the core team. We can easily shift this structure away from patient care and look at multi-team structure in relation to health IT teams, with the ultimate point being that teams do not operate in a vacuum. They are affected by teams above and below them in the system hierarchy. The takeaway point is that a team must work with others within a multi-team structure to achieve its goals. For example, in the core principle of leadership, Team Steps addresses several team events around planning, problem solving, and process improvement. Each of these team events could be used in health IT teamwork. For example, a briefing session is one that covers assigning roles and tasks, establishing expectations, and planning for, quote, what if, end quote, situations. This can just as easily apply to health IT as it would to an operating room team. For problem solving, Team Steps calls for a, quote, huddle, end quote, where the team reinforces plans already in place, talks about adapting or changing plans, establishes situational awareness, gives a pep talk, and the like. The final team event discussed within Team Steps is a debriefing. This is quite easy to apply to health IT teams by asking questions such as, what could we have done better and how? How can the team performance be enhanced? Become familiar with these teams, not just because they are used within healthcare situations, but because a health IT team often uses these same three types of approaches, briefing, huddling, and then debriefing. Here is an example of a checklist from the Team Steps site. It includes asking the following questions.
who is on the team. All members understand and agree upon goals. Roles and responsibilities are understood. What is our plan of care? Staff and providers' availability throughout the shift. Workload among team members. Availability of resources. Shown on this slide is the example provided by AHRQ in regards to a debrief checklist. The questions written include the following. Communication clear. Roles and responsibilities understood. Situation awareness maintained. Workload distribution equitable. Task assistance requested or offered. Were errors made or avoided? Availability of resources. What went well? What should change? What should improve? According to the Team Steps site, quote, Situation monitoring is a key component of the teamwork process and is intimately linked to the other three essential elements of teamwork. Because situation monitoring concerns the willingness and ability to continually monitor situations and share this awareness with fellow team members, it is enhanced by team leadership given that team leaders encourage and role model supportive behaviors. Situation monitoring allows mutual support through the ability to anticipate other team members' needs with accurate knowledge of their responsibilities. Situation monitoring is also moderated by communication, which allows for the sharing of new and emerging information with other team members to retain a shared mental model." End quote. When the situation is monitored actively and constantly, the needs of team members are better able to be predicted. This contributes to team performance, team flexibility, and team adaptability. This flexibility and awareness of the situation enhances the recognition of problems or challenges before they reach a critical stage. This enables a team to enhance its ability to compensate for other team members, self-correct their plan of action if necessary, and it also increases their sense of shared understanding. This shared understanding across the team is also referred to as a shared, quote, mental model, end quote. As is reflected in the slide, situational modeling is a continual and constant cycle. When incoming information is received and managed, it results in situation awareness on the part of the individual. When the individual shares her information with the team, the result is then a shared mental model across the team. Everyone becomes aware. Situation monitoring is a skill. It can be both taught and learned. It requires an awareness of what is going on within the team, as well as external to the team, and it is a process. It is a skill that increases with experience. For instance, an experienced health IT person can often sense or spot an impending issue in a project before it becomes evident to others. Situation awareness is a bit different from situation monitoring. It is a, quote, state, end quote, not a process, and it is not static. Thereby, it requires a constant state of awareness on the part of a team member. The situational awareness state is knowing the state of conditions or circumstances that can impact your work. We mentioned shared mental models a bit earlier, but in this diagram, we see where it fits in the cycle, and we see that a shared mental model means that everyone on the team is sharing situational aspects and knowledge, which results in the team outcomes of a shared mental model. The iterative process that you see reflected in this diagram illustrates the dynamic nature of the situational monitoring process. Teams, particularly in healthcare and health IT, operate in dynamic and constantly changing environments. It is important to point out that a shared mental model and the situational monitoring process does not imply that the team becomes an automation. The individual team member continues to maintain her own situational awareness, but it is in the sharing that the team reaches the shared mental model that helps them to move forward in concert. Moving back to the circular image that was presented earlier illustrating the components of team steps, we now move on to the concept of mutual support. Of course, we have talked about this numerous times before, so, quote, 
watching out, end quote, for another team member should not be a new concept for you. The difference here is that in team steps, it is not just a nice thing to do, it is a required thing to do. It is an expectation. A team is only as good as its weakest link, and for the team to reach high performance, all members must help one another out. Does this always happen? No. But when a team member is flailing or failing, it is the responsibility of each and every team member to support one another. The form of mutual support, seen on the slide, is in relation to task assistance and again is focused in a patient care environment. Remember, however, where Team Steps was developed. Remember CRM? Crew Resource Management? The Aviation Industry? Therefore, take the references to acute care and patient safety into context. Whether you are part of a trauma clinical team or implementing EHRs in a safety net clinic, the concepts are the same. Throwing a team member under the bus is a sign of poor team behavior and one that warrants removal of the team member doing the throwing from the team. We will discuss bad team behaviors and strategies for dealing with them in a later unit. What is expected is that the team has the situational awareness to see when team members are struggling, taking into account their workload, their level of fatigue, their stress level, their performance, and their level of skill. If there is good situational awareness and situational monitoring going on in the team, then the identification of and support of a struggling team member will be automatic. Mutual support across a high-performing team, as asserted at the beginning of this presentation, is a skill that can be taught and learned. It would be nice if all teams were high-performing, and the journey is always smooth sailing, but we know that this is often not the case. Therefore, again in the spirit of teaching and learning, a strategy that can be used within a team to engender mutual support when there is conflict across the team is illustrated on the slide. In the Team Steps model, this is called the desk script. The mnemonic offered here makes it easier to remember. D represents describe, where you describe the specific situation or behavior. It cannot be generic or diffuse. It should be concrete. For example, a comment such as, quote, you abruptly interrupted the clinic clerk three times during our session today, end quote, instead of, quote, you really blew that session today, end quote. The E represents express. For example, quote, when you abruptly interrupted the clinic clerk three times as she was relaying her needs earlier today, it upset her and made her unwilling to offer more detail. We needed that detail to complete our analysis. I am worried that we may have alienated her, end quote. The S stands for suggest, which is a basic tenet of creating a sense of mutual support in the team. In other words, the critique is necessary, but so is the suggestion of alternatives and then working to reach agreement. This is one of those self-correcting mechanisms that is a hallmark of a high-performing team. The final letter, C stands for consequences. Consequences are represented as a statement of the result of failure to correct the problem on the shared team goal. The consequences may be that the needs analysis is completed without the vital input of an important stakeholder group from the clinic, such as the clerk. Or maybe alienating this clerk will result in an increased level of resistance to participating in the EHR rollout in the clinic. The takeaway here is that there are strategies for increasing mutual support. Not all teams are high performing at inception, and these sorts of techniques can help all of us in growing the camaraderie and support across any team, be it health IT or a rowing team. Communication is vital to team performance. This concept is emphasized on the Team Steps website. Quote, Communication is an important component of the team process because it serves as a coordinating mechanism or supporting structure for teamwork. Communication skills interplay directly with leadership, situation monitoring, and mutual support. Team leaders provide guidance through verbal feedback. Effective communication skills are needed to convey clear information, provide awareness of roles and responsibilities, and explain how performance impacts outcomes.
Team members monitor situations by communicating any changes to keep the team informed and the patient protected. Communication facilitates a culture of mutual support. End quote. One of the communication techniques used in Team Steps is called SBAR. It stands for Situation, Background, Assessment, and Recommendation. This technique is simply a standardized way to communicate for framing an important situation. Of course, the Team Steps site is focused on an emergent patient care situation. But it is important to note that SBAR was actually conceived within the community of submariners who needed a way to communicate quickly with the captain. Sometimes you may see SBAR with a quote I in front of it. The I stands for introductions. Standards of communication are essential for developing teamwork, and SBAR is a very common approach used in healthcare situations. You will most likely encounter it somewhere in your encounters with the healthcare system, and you may find utility in this approach in your health IT team as well. Here is a general example of an SBAR communication during a situation of a system failure. For situation, the individual reports what is happening in a short, concise sentence. Quote, the system went to blue screen again and is non-responsive, end quote. For the background, the person reporting gives a very short background of the issue. Quote, this is a new system installed last week, and this is the third time it has crashed today. We have already had to reboot twice. End quote. For the assessment, the person reporting gives her idea of what the problem may be. Quote, it seems as though every time we open this one window in the program, it shuts down. End quote. For recommendation, what the reporting person recommends to rectify, such as, quote, I suggest that we put in a service call as we reboot the system. Then I think we should tell all users to avoid the troublesome module, not open it, and we will go to paper backup if someone really needs to use this feature of the system until the service person is able to fix it, end quote. SBAR is a way that enables clear and concise communication in a timely fashion. Another technique that you may encounter, which may be useful to an HIT team, is the call-out. During urgent events, a targeted command or piece of information may need to be immediately relayed to a member of the team. In a trauma example, there is a lot of calling out going on. These high-performing teams are very good at filtering out what is being called to whom. Generally, in HIT teams, there is not a great deal of need for a call-out, but it is a strategy being developed by military teams to directly relay important information to the captain of the ship or the pilot of the aircraft. Another communication strategy that is very good for use in health IT teams is the checkback. This is a simple technique that involves one person repeating what is said to assure that the interpretation is correct. In healthcare, this technique is critically important, particularly in urgent situations, where a clinician yells out, quote, give 25 milligrams of Benadryl IV push, end quote. And the person administering the medication says, quote, 25 milligrams of Benadryl IV push, right? End quote. And the ordering clinician replies, quote, yes, end quote. When might you use this technique in an HIT teaming experience? How about as you are conducting a needs analysis and the nursing aide relays that she needs a way to record the vital signs into the EHR in real time? You would check back immediately to her and say something like, quote, I think you just said that you really needed a way that you could immediately get the results from a patient's vital signs and put them into the EHR in real time. Is that correct? End quote. Or possibly the team lead repeats the goals for today's efforts, to which another team member checks back to assure that everyone on the team heard and has the same understanding. This type of repeating helps to assure quality communication. The term handoff is a commonly used term in healthcare, particularly in regards to a patient encounter. It is a term you should be familiar with, regardless of whether or not you find yourself in an acute care facility or not. Why? 
It is intimately related to health IT because part of the goal of health IT is to smooth the transition from one area to another electronically. The literature abounds with statistics that show that patient handoffs are the most dangerous time for patient safety. Handoffs are fraught with miscommunication, missing data, and the like. The Team Step site explains it this way, quote, Lack of clarity about who is responsible for care and for decision-making has often been a major contributor to medical error, as identified in root cause analyses of sentinel events and poor outcomes, end quote. In regards to working in health IT teams, we can conceptualize handoffs as one team transitions off a program and another picks it up, or as a team leader leaves and there is a transition of leadership, or many, many other situations where a transition occurs and requires an exchange of a plan, materials, information, or even a patient. A proper handoff regardless of what is being handed off, includes the six components listed on the right-hand side of this slide. First, when you hand off, it is not enough to just pass it on and walk away. You must assure that the person you are handing off to understands their responsibility and that they are assuming responsibility for whatever you are handing off to them. In a handoff, you are responsible for whatever is being handed off until the person you're handing off to acknowledges that they have accepted the handoff. I often wonder if this is what drives the flight attendant on an aircraft to require that you verbally respond, quote, yes, end quote, if you are sitting in an exit row and are willing to assume responsibility for sitting in that row. It's an accountability step, I am sure. Who is responsible in handoff when there is ambiguity or uncertainty? It is the responsibility of the person handing off to assure that the handoff is clean and clear before relinquishing responsibility. This clean handoff is accomplished through full confirmation and acknowledgement. Think about flight attendants explaining safety procedures. The new standard for those who are sitting in the exit rows is that the attendants require that you are looking at them and paying attention as they review the safety features of the aircraft. Then they require that you verbally acknowledge transfer of responsibility to man the emergency exit. It is clear that attendants will not be there to help you, and they want a verbal sign that you have acknowledged that you understand and are willing to help in the case of an emergency. This is the same principle as the handoff in the team steps. The final element, opportunity, is there to imply that it is a good time to have an independent pair of eyes watch the handoff to find opportunities for improvement. Feedback, another one of the prime concepts of team steps communication aspect, has several important characteristics for a high-performing team. For instance, feedback must be timely. It does no good to wait a week after an event to provide feedback. It should happen immediately. It must be respectfully provided and should focus on actions and behaviors and avoid the personal. Feedback must be specific and directed toward improvement. The Team Steps model of communicating feedback requires respect, fairness, and consideration. This is definitely a learned skill and one that improves with practice. It is hard to offer constructive criticism or to use other techniques to realign a team or an individual member of the team, but with practice, it does get easier. The final aspect of team steps to discuss is a team observation tool that can be used to get a quantified assessment of the team's performance. This is difficult to view here, but in essence, it offers a few elements that align with each of the five circles that we have spent the last 17 slides discussing. Under each of these five, team structure, leadership, situation monitoring, mutual support, and communication, are evaluation elements that can be quantified and an assessment of team performance derived. This observation tool and many, many more, can be found on the Team Steps site at the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality. This slide is another illustration taken from the AHRQ website. It shows Team Steps as a three-stage project. Assessment, Phase 1. Planning, Training, and Implementation, Phase 2. 
and sustainment, phase three. These phases are continuous and are designed not only to help build and maintain mindful and meaningful teams, but also to shift the entire culture from isolated thinking to teaming for safety and quality improvement. Team Steps is focused intently on patient safety and direct patient care situations, which is critically important. However, the application of Team Steps to working in HIT teams allows for a more broad interpretation and application. There is a large collection of tools available on the AHRQ website that can either be used intact or modified for teaming in environments other than direct patient care. The slide illustrates how the Team Steps methodology is rolled out across the three phases. Each phase has an associated set of tools and strategies that are used to assure readiness to progress to the next stage. According to the Team Steps Implementation Guide, quote, keys to success at each phase include involvement of the right people, the use of information-driven decision-making, and careful planning before acting, end quote. As can be seen by scanning across the bottom of the image, the steps are to set the stage, decide what to do, make it happen, and make it stick. In Lecture B of this unit, we will present some of the tools, measures, and techniques that can be used to help any team move from inception to sustainment. The principles are generic, and we have been covering the concepts of teaming in general. We hope that at this point in the lectures and activities that you will be able to creatively apply some of the tools and techniques in your own HIT team. This concludes Lecture A of Working in Teams, Team Steps. In summary, we have introduced and detailed the Team Steps approach and discussed how Team Steps can be used to improve team performance. Although Team Steps is focused on clinical interactions, the concepts actually derived from the military industry as a way to improve the performance of a team, improve communication of vital information, provide ground rules for providing feedback, and ultimately is a way for teams to pull together and think with one mind. We provided a few examples of applicable Team Steps tools for your review and talked about how they can be applied in an HIT team to enhance camaraderie and cohesion. The science of team performance and team training was touched upon and will be explored more deeply in Lecture B.